Hey guys! Hello. I'm here with Vicky Logan. If you're not sure, I'm Ashley D. We're doing a vlog. Yes, we're doing a vlog type thing. Type video this is actually vlog. supposed to be on Ashley's radio show. If you don't know about her radio show, you should check it out. It is called Ashley, Ashley and Company. Company. And I was going to be the company. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it didn't work out. You know, you do what you can and... So we're just going to do a video instead. Yep. Which I figured would be awesome because you get to see us. Together. So thing, thing this is actually the first time we've actually been in a formal video type setting together. Together in... since like 2012. Yeah. Peaches and Coco Puffs are reunited. Yeah. Today we're talking about managing friendships through the different seasons in your life. Um, because quite frankly, we got a lot of questions as far as how our transition was, as far as our friendship was concerned. Um, when Vicky got married and like I was still single and then she moved on top of that so people were wondering how we managed. How we dealt with that. Yeah, how we dealt with it. And we thought it would be a good idea to talk about it. Not because we want people to be in our business or that it's okay for people to be in our business because it's not. We actually don't have to come on here and talk about this. But we felt like it would be a good idea to discuss it just because I feel like a lot of people's relationships go through this kind of thing and they don't address it and then people especially nowadays with social media and things like that it's becoming more and more of a thing to just cut people off and not deal with your problems right and that's almost what we did actually we tried it a couple times and it failed, it failed and so <laughs> I think that was just God's way of telling us that we need to come on here and talk to you guys about dealing with it so that you guys don't make the same mistakes we did because we made a few. We made a few mistakes, and we're not ashamed to come on here and talk about it. Yeah. Just so you guys can get some insight, and if you are having friendship issues, I know a lot of people in my friendship solutions video were like, thank you, this helped me a lot, because yeah. I have problems with friendships and stuff, and it's like, people don't know how to deal with this stuff. We didn't know how to deal with it, because nobody right. told us. Right. So that's why we're here now. When you become a good friend to those around you, you can be a good friend to your husband, you can be a good friend right. to... Um, and then good things start happening to you when you when you fix your relationships. Yes. You can deal with people better, and you, you get more opportunities to work with people and things mm -hmm. like that, because you're ready for it, you know? Yeah. This applies for everybody all relationships. relationships so we are first going to start off with a little background about our friendship just about in us. case you don't watch us or you watch one of us but not both of us chronological chronological order. yes we're gonna chronologically, chronologically time periodically yes. <laughs> periodically time we met when we both dressed like lizzie mcguire yes and we met in middle school. We met before. Well, actually, our families knew each other before then. Mm -hmm. So, like I mean, years before yeah, they then. went to the same church and stuff. I mean, if you're from Texas, you know, everybody's separated by everybody two people. Everybody knows. So, everybody. I mean, yeah. everybody if you're from Fort Worth, <laughs> yeah, everybody knows <laughs> each other, basically. So, I mean, we kind of knew each other before we knew each other. So, but we officially met in middle school. Um, mm -hmm. at the bus stop. We just became friends. We just became friends. Yeah, yeah, we sat by each other on the bus. We watched Spongebob over the phone. Typical middle school friendship. Yeah. Fast forward to high school. Fast forward to high school. We went to separate high schools. Yes, I went to a private school and she went to a public school. Mm -hmm. we, we were still friends. Yeah. But we weren't close. We Not were still close, friends. Close, but we were like really We got close friends. towards the end of high school. Well, my yeah. end of high school when I, because I'm a year older. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'd always been friends. No, I mean, but like hanging out. Yeah. On a hanging like, out basis. Because I had track. a car. Because I had a yeah, car. Yeah, she so had a car and she was... ran track and I was on the step team. So it wasn't that we were like having problems or anything. We just like did different things. Yeah. And yeah. had like our own little But once I, once I got a car, I was able to like go visit her at school and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I would go to her school. She's so clutch. She used to bring me lunch all the time. I used to bring her time. lunch. <laughs> and, yep. And then um, I invited her to go to prom with me. Yes. I couldn't have a date. The only girl with a girl at prom, but it's okay. <laughs> no lesbian. No lesbian. But yeah, this is... No homo, guys. No but homo. This is us at prom. Yeah, we pretty much did everything together. We went to prom together. We used to like hang out all the time. We'd go get sushi and ice cream all the time. That was our and... thing. Piranha sushi, marble slab ice cream. You graduated, and then a year later... I graduated. I graduated. Um, we worked in the same mall. So basically our point is we were like always together. Always pretty much. Everything together. was together. And even with YouTube, like we started making videos at the same like around the same time. Mm -hmm. I was like making videos on Facebook and she was posting videos on Facebook, which are so funny and I wish I had They're those videos. Hilarious. So you guys could see them because they were literally the funniest videos ever in life. I reactivated my Facebook, so my videos are still there. Oh my god, can you get those? Yeah. We started and doing makeup at the same time. We started doing makeup at the same time. BH cosmetics. Yep. We pretty much did 
everything together. So we were your typical best friend best situation. Friends. BFF. Like BFF. BFF. L. L. BFF. L. 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 Things changed. Yeah. Um, around when I went to college. That's kind of when things started changing. Yeah. Kind of took me away from being able to hang out as much and being mm -hmm. able to do the same things. Like we weren't doing the same thing anymore. So it felt mm -hmm. kind of weird. We didn't address it because no, we, we don't address it. Like, okay. Anytime let we me just give y'all a little background about me and then she yes. give a little background about her. I, I'm not confrontational. I don't address things. So if there's a problem, I'm not going to talk about it. That's just me. I'm just not going to bring it up because I don't like to bring stuff up because I don't want to cause any problems. You know, if I felt like something was weird or off or different, I wouldn't say anything. Things started building up. One thing would happen or another thing would happen and it would like cause a rift in our friendship. But we wouldn't say anything because we didn't want to avoid it. I mean, we didn't, I mean, we didn't want to, we wanted to avoid it. Yeah, we didn't want to address it. When I go through things, like if I if I have a problem, I don't want people to talk to me about it. I just deal with myself. I stay to myself. I don't need anybody to help me. I don't know. Mm -mm, I got this, guys. I'm doing it myself. It's cool. And then I'm like, okay, let's move on. But I didn't know that other people weren't like that. You know, when we ever, whenever we had problems, I didn't know how to deal with Ashley's problems. We never really dealt with anything. We didn't have any experience in dealing with anything. Mm -hmm. If something happened, we just fell apart. Yeah, we had a real cupcake friendship, so we had... Yeah, like, everything um, was just peachy and happy all the time. It was based on food, and it was based on yeah. makeup, and like... It was, it was superficial. superficial. If something really bad happened, we would just not yeah. talk about it, or we wouldn't talk to each other for like months, and then yeah. <laughs> it was just awkward, like we didn't want to address it. And if we did address something, we did it the wrong way. I will admit that I would be the one who would like subtweet. Yeah. Who would like just talk about my feelings, but I would vent online. Mm -hmm. And that's the literally the worst thing in the whole universe to do. Just getting online and just saying anything like getting on Tumblr, getting on Twitter. Talking was, about each other. Yeah. Like we couldn't see it. Subliminally. Subliminally. So we would see it, but then it was. Yeah. It and was, it just, it makes things a lot worse than like you would think. Right. Instead of just talking to each other face to face. Right. Like, it's like, why didn't we just call each other, each other yeah. the thing is like we were kind of like fake about it and we would call each other but we would be like hey do you want to go out to eat yeah it's like <laughs> yeah everything's cool so we're just you know, gonna pretend like fine. it never happened yeah. it only caused more tension yeah and stuff started building up we had a big spat and that was when our relationship became like really really challenged mm -hmm. um it was kind of at a point where i don't know about you but like I felt like I don't want to be friends anymore. Mm -hmm. We both like made really crucial, like really detrimental mistakes at that point. And that was, I mean, before then there were like warning signs, like y'all need to talk, y'all need to talk, y'all need to talk. Yeah, there was always warnings. There was always those moments where it's like, I feel like there's, we need to say something, but yeah. we never did. That was like when everything just like exploded. Yeah. Um, and we didn't talk for like months. Yeah. We didn't talk for months. Months. And any time that happened, we didn't never really say let's separate or whatever. It was just like, I'm not going to address it, so I'm just going to not talk about it. I'm just mm -hmm. going to go give you your space. I thought the space was good. She thought the space was bad. It kind of made her feel like, I don't want to be friends anymore. And I'm like, yeah. well, why don't you want to be friends anymore? And so, and, and I'm like, because you don't want to be friends anymore. And it, right. And it's like, it's like, because we didn't discuss it and yeah. talk about it, we didn't know where each other was coming from. So she didn't know that me giving her space was me trying to let her, you know, have deal time to things. deal with it yeah. in a healthy way. You know, I wanted it to be okay. I didn't know that she thought that I hated her. Like, so. because like Vicky deals with stuff by like desiring space. But me, I deal with stuff by like desiring like more of a closeness. Like if I'm going right. through something, I want someone to be like, are you okay? Like, is everything good? Like what's happening? Like what's going on? And it was I've kind never of been hard. a talker. So yeah, it was kind of hard having a best friend that's like. Doesn't want to talk about it. That doesn't want to talk about challenging things. So I would kind of like shut down because I'm like, oh man, I'm going through something. But I can't talk to Vicky about but it. But I can't talk to Vicky about it. Doesn't want to talk about so it. So we got to go just get sushi. But I never, th you say that, but I was always like, man, why doesn't she tell me about things right like she was but I just I just expect you to come talk to me about something like yes. I don't expect people to want me to come in because I'm not gonna do that right like, I will only come in if you invite me in I'm not gonna knock so she never knocked so I, I would like purposely like not tell her stuff but it wasn't like in a malicious way it was just like well I don't ever talk to Vicky about serious stuff so I'm just gonna go talk to this person and then and, I felt like and she would be no. like but I thought we were best friends like you're not telling me anything and I was like but yeah <laughs> and then I'm like okay well she don't want to be my friend she friends with other people and then I'm like well she doesn't want to be my friend 
and she doesn't ever talk to me about it. So, so we were both being like ratty. After that happened, that's when I started dating Cameron. Yeah, that was like the very that beginning. That was actually the very beginning of when I started dating Cameron. Mm -hmm. And then um, the whole relationship I had with Cameron, she wasn't there. So we dated for three years and probably two out of one maybe half one and, one and a half, half out of those things towards the end of me and him dating is when we first started getting back because mm -hmm. he told me to because i was being selfish and he was like no you need to go but anyway yeah um, we both have people in our point, ear saying we like, had everybody telling us to fix it yeah we didn't want to fix it i didn't think i needed to fix it because i didn't think that it would affect my other relationships but it did it did it and affected mine as well i'll get to that in a minute but <laughs> yeah towards the end of me and him dating is when we started being friends again mm -hmm. and so i was about to get married First of all, we're growing up, so it's like, this is weird because so I've known you since I was yes. like 12, so we're getting, I'm getting married, what? Mm -hmm. And so like at that point, it was like, I don't even know, I don't even know how to deal with this because we're at this age now where we have to, we have to deal with big things. Yes. And it's forcing us to deal with it, but we are still trying to hold on to not dealing with stuff. There was like this tension, this like elephant in the room, and it was so uncomfortable. It actually, was my maid of honor in my wedding, and it was almost to the point where I didn't even really want to ask her because I didn't even know if she would want to do it because I don't know if we're okay. And I didn't know if we were okay, so I felt like it would be rude of me to turn it down. Right, and so it was just awkward. So the whole just, thing was awkward. It was, it was really like, awkward. There's, if, if I don't ask, she's going to be mad at me. But if I do ask, she will feel like she has to do it. We were so used to doing everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when she like got engaged and she was about to get married, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because marriage is like a secret society. And like you can't, <laughs> you can't talk what? to your single friends. <laughs> it's not that I can't talk to my single friends. It's just when you're married, you're different. And you yes. feel different. And it's like there's certain things you can't talk about with single people. Because exactly. they don't get it. And you don't, you don't. Cause you have, just because you haven't experienced it. Not right. because they're not going to understand. It's just, oh, no, no, not that. They haven't experienced it. And so, so it was like this barrier was up again. And I'm just like, uh -oh. We can't get to each like, other. We can't get to each other. Right. Cause like. Cause it's not like graduation where oh I'm graduating next year like and you said that it was a form of jealousy and it it was like a form of envy because it was just like if I was engaged at the time I would be like oh yeah like I would totally right. understand but since I was like completely single I was just like what once the wedding came the whole wedding day I don't think you said like two words until <laughs> like she was dead quiet I was like we were all like just like I'm like I was shaking like I was getting married I'm like I know I'm like nervous because I'm thinking like and after so, this she's going to Hawaii and then after this she's moving away like yeah. she's gonna like she's leaving so I have to like mentally prepare myself for her to just like not be here and it was like weird and to me it came off to me like she's not happy for me for me it came off to me like she's not waiting for me yeah. like I can't understand her because I don't know what's going on all of those issues we had had before I'm not talking about stuff and not dealing with stuff it was still there too yeah so it was like pulling back to those problems and it's like well remember when you did this remember when you did that and yeah you're still doing it and you're still so it's just like at that point I was like okay well I'm married so I'm just gonna go yeah. and do me and then, you know, if Ashley feels like she wants to talk to me, but I feel like she hates me, so... And I didn't, and I wasn't jealous because she was getting married, and I wasn't because I didn't want to get married at that time. It was just like, I don't get it. When I went to prom with her, I was like, oh, I get prom, because, you know, we're both here, we're both dressed right. up. But, like, even when she graduated, I was like, oh, you know, I get graduation, because I'm graduating next but year. Did, yeah, but... But I just didn't get married. It wasn't, that wasn't your time. It, it just, wasn't... It wasn't in the car for me at right. that time so you know she's doing all of this preparation to become a wife and that's like a different preparation than being a full-time college student so we could at that point we couldn't relate yeah and so we were like two the fact that we people. couldn't relate anymore and felt like we had nothing in common anymore it felt like we weren't friends anymore so when she moved I was like <laughs> I was at the point where I was like, man, I'm just ready to go because I feel like I'm ruining everything for her. So I'm just going to leave. And and I felt me. the same way. I was like, she's gone now. I'm not ruining her life. I'm not making her a couple. That's what I felt. I was like, it was almost a relief because yeah. we were forced to be apart. I think what really pushed us to come back and try and fix it was that we could still, even though it was a thousand miles away, and I'm not even talking to Ashley. I mean, I didn't face FaceTime once. 
Well, yeah, you gave me a tour of your house. Yeah, FaceTime it, one time, and then after that, we really didn't even talk anymore. And still seeing her everywhere. It's everywhere. like literally, we were haunting each other. Yep. I, we can't escape each I other. I can't. We can't. <laughs> and it's like I know it was a problem because I still had bitterness towards the situation. Me too. I still had friendship bitterness, and let me tell you how. Like bitterness or anger towards anybody, like in your family or your friendships or whatever. If you haven't let stuff go and moved on from it, it'll carry over into your other relationships. I haven't had problems with just Ashley. I've had problems with all kinds of friends and stuff. I've always had problems with friendships. Same here. And so, because Ashley was such a big part of my life and we had so many problems, it's like I looked at every other friendship with the same eye, like I looked at ours. Yeah. So dealing with those problems never worked because I never dealt with our problems. You can move literally anywhere on this planet mm -hmm. but Unless your problems come with you like you don't, don't become a new person there is no reset button you have to work things out where you are with who you're dealing with mm -hmm. and then you can go wherever it is that you need to go but moving getting new stuff um getting new friends uh if you have problems in one relationship jumping to another one everything follows and you. that's i was at a marriage retreat they were talking about that how People can get a divorce from somebody and then marry somebody else and have the same issues. And like, but I married a whole new person. How am I having the same issues? Well, it's not really the person. It's really the issues that you didn't deal with right. in that divorce that carried over into your relationship. So it's not necessarily people that are the problem. It's the issues that you don't deal with that are right. the problem. Issues are literally like debt. It's yeah. like credit card debt. You can literally try to get a new identity to avoid paying off the debt to avoid letting stuff go but it never works like they can track you electronically like sally may yeah. she sally knows may will find you all and she will find she will you. send you a nice little handwritten note in the mail yes. like hey boo, sally may you all, need to pay yeah debt follows you so it follows you. so you have to in order to get rid of like your debt, as far as like issues are concerned, you have to let stuff go. Um, some people you can't talk to because maybe they've passed away or maybe uh, they're just not talk to -able. <laughs> But it's if you have people that you can talk to, it's best to talk to them and say, hey, I forgive you or like, hey, will you please forgive me? Right. Um, and that's what we did. We both asked for forgiveness and said, hey, like I did this. It wasn't cool. I did that. Like I, I didn't mean to do that to you. And I think, I think the difference, because we asked, I mean, I've, I've apologized so many times to Ashley because I'm a, I'm an apologizer. So I'm like, if I did, even if I don't feel like I did something wrong, I'm still going to apologize just because I want my name to be clear. Right. But like, even though we had apologized multiple times in the past and we had like kind of cleared the air, even though we didn't, yeah. we got a fresh start, even though we didn't yeah. like, even after doing that so many times, what made this time different was the fact that we recognize that we are not the same person and that we're different mm -hmm. people. And I think that's what makes the difference is that you know that you don't think like somebody else. And I say this all the time. You don't, you have your own mind, okay? So yeah. nobody else thinks like you. You're the only person that's been through what you've been through and you, you have your own experiences. So I can't look at Ashley and say, well, why don't you think like this? Because I think like this, so you should yeah. think like this too. That's not gonna work. So I think we realize that we're on different paths, we're different people, we do different stuff, but that's okay. Yeah. And it's okay that we're not involved in every single part of our lives together. Like, yeah. I don't have to know all of her personal business. I think we were so stuck on a title and how we look to other people, especially mm -hmm. being on YouTube, that we wanted to make things like- look, Picture perfect. Picture perfect. like best friends like Spongebob Patrick like we had to stay that way and we had to stay the way we were when we were 12 like that's not gonna work because change is gonna happen it's yeah. inevitable so we had to change the dynamic of our friendship right and that's fine and changing the dynamic like Vicky just said it was like understanding that we're not the same people that we were mm -hmm. when we were on our house films watching the Spongebob movie like right. we're totally different people you're married you're in Illinois I'm a full-time college student and um, I'm working we may be doing the same thing as far as like YouTube is concerned but and we're that's, not the same yeah but we're not the same me personally I had like this Kelly complex where I felt like she was Beyonce and I was Kelly and I was kind of like in the background and I was just like <laughs> say my name, say my name. and like, I'm all like when no one is around like, and I was just like hey 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 but I want to be married to Jay and I want to be Ivy and I want to yeah <laughs> and so 
like, but and you can't, you gotta yeah, find your own You way. have to find your own way. And as y'all can see, even in Beyonce and Kelly's friendship, you can tell that they have found their own way. And that's how we like finally settled all of this. We're like, we're not best friends, we're sisters. Mm -hmm. And we have to treat each other like sisters and not with this stupid title yeah. of like best friendship. Because like you want to, you want to like do everything with your best friend and like we used to like match and stuff. We did. We matched like shared clothes. Yeah, we shared. And clothes. I was so frustrated when she like gained weight and yep. wasn't a zero anymore, and I yep. couldn't fit her jeans. I'm like, are you yep. kidding me? And she put a hole in my shorts. I sure did. We we're out. trying so hard to be like the same. Cause you can't be like somebody else. Cause no. you're your own person. Yes. You have to be yourself because everybody else is already taken. Sounds so. like something Candy Johnson would say. Sounds like something Candy Johnson has said. She probably she probably, she probably said it in the same. But place. you know they look especially on YouTube. Yeah. Especially on YouTube. Yes. Or stop looking at other people and their progression doing something and saying, why am I not there? Why don't I have that yet? Or why isn't yes. it the same for me? Because you have your own life and your own path. You know, you can't be like thrown off by what somebody else is doing because that's not your life. You right. don't have the same life as them. You mm -hmm. didn't go through the same thing as them. So you don't you don't know how they got there. You don't know if you're ready to be there. You know what I mean? Right. You think you want to be married, but bruh. Bruh. And you know, so many people, especially in the Christian community, and I really wish the they young would Christian stop community doing too. this yeah. is trying to trying to to keep up with this I gotta be married by a certain time quota. Yeah. I gotta have kids by a certain time quota. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stop doing that. Just stop allow it. your life to to happen the way it's happen supposed the, to happen. Yeah, the way and if you're not so to. busy looking at what everybody else is doing, things will happen for you. Things will happen for you when you're content. Because yes. you're not looking for it, you know what I mean? Calm because down. everything has a process, everything has its own step-by-step -step learning development that mm -hmm. you have to go through. I think I said a tweet like that. Yes, I, I just think quoted you did. myself. That's good. But yeah, everything has a it, yeah, everything has a development process. And I'm I'm the kind of person I go with the flow. I don't ever ask for anything if I know that I ain't ready for it. Like Yeah, she's always been a go with the flow type of person. Right. Like, I was always the person that tried to like force things sometimes when I was like, well, I feel like I deserve it or I feel like I'm ready for this, so I'm gonna just go for it. I've tried it maybe once or twice and that's why I was like, at that point I'm like, yeah. nope, <laughs> I'm going into everything with no expectations and I'm just gonna go with the flow because doing things myself doesn't work. But And that's like when Vicky got in, like, in her relationship and I could tell it was like getting serious, I was thinking like, Am I not deserving of a serious relationship? Like, is she more deserving than I am? And so that's where, like, that Kelly complex came right. in. Like, I felt like I was in the background. And I, I don't like... And that wasn't the case. It was just, like, different paths, different timing. I hate when people think that way because it's like, nobody is not deserving of good things. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, everybody deserves good things. Like I said, there's a process. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you don't want anything you're not ready for. Because if right. you get it at the wrong time, then it's not going to work out. And then that's even more heartache and you have to go through a certain process because of you know the way maybe the way you were raised or maybe the way you grew up or some maybe something's missing in that puzzle piece mm -hmm. or that puzzle that you need to complete the puzzle you know what I'm saying you can't look at your coworker and ask why they got a promotion and why you don't well what have you been doing to get a promotion have you been working hard too or maybe it's just not maybe your it's time just not right your right time now. like you maybe you know? there and maybe there's another opportunity outside of that so if y'all are having um friendship problems relationship or just problems. relationship problems especially 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 with your family your parents y'all your relationship with your family is so important you can cannot have relationships outside of your family that are successful if you don't have a good relationship with your family period good relationship doesn't have to be it doesn't mean perfect right it doesn't mean it has to be perfect but if like if you have a parent that's absent um because it was like their choice to leave don't hate them. yeah don't resent them don't hold anything against them mm -hmm. um if they try to make it right yeah try to make it right if they're making an effort then match that effort mm -hmm. um if they're not making an effort then in your own mind and in your own just within yourself just know that you forgive them and, mm -hmm. and release the tension and release the resentment and the right. anger you can't hold stuff in guys you have to let stuff go and that's like the key to us restoring our friendship when we became people that instead of just saying it because it sounds cute instead of just saying let stuff go when we actually just let stuff go like vicky yeah, just, doesn't just doesn't ask me like hey are you still like are you are you sure don't I'm even just, think about it like just move on let it go just move on man 
let it go. Both of us let stuff go. And so now there isn't like an elephant anymore. It's just like, we're just like chilling. We're chill. And our relationship's not the same. I'm not gonna sit here and say, well, no. we're best friends again. And no. we can just, no. <laughs> and one thing I will say is that Ashley, since we've kind of fixed everything and now she's kind of coming into her own, I can see that she's coming into her own and yeah, it's so cool because really she's like going through her little grow up phase and I'm like look at you yeah. becoming Ashley because for the longest time I felt like Ashley was not herself she was trying to be somebody else well she was fighting who she really was yeah. and now that we've kind of come into our own and we're really growing up it's like she's finding her her look and her mm -hmm. way and she has a radio show and all this stuff that I'm not a part of and that makes me feel great because it's like I know she's happy being herself now yeah it makes me really happy because I'm not Vicky's best friend. For a long time, I've had that like on my forehead, and it's just like I was trying to be kind of like a mixture of Vicky and like other people that I thought were like acceptable and cool. Like Vicky left, and then we restored everything, and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna be me. And then like I started growing on YouTube, and then I got opportunities to do like the radio show, and I was just like, it's I like should have been myself the whole time. <laughs> That was a long time ago. Like I didn't feel like it was okay to be me. I didn't feel like anybody actually really cared who I was. Mm -hmm. So when you um, let stuff go and you just like really clear the air with people and you don't have any bitterness or anger and, and you're not stop trying to live up to people's expectations. Yes. Other people's expectations. And you're not looking at somebody else's like grass. Like, well, what do you know what fertilizer are you using? Right. Like, All right. How much? Are you, how many times are you watering your grass a day? It, like, stop focusing on other people and what they have going on. Like, we have a YouTube sister that hit 200k. That's awesome. Everyone in the sisterhood is like hitting milestones. We're all like achieving. But we're all things. hitting them at different times, and exactly. we're not all. And I think some people maybe think that we're like competing or something or I don't know but if you ever thought that that's not the case Kill we are not <laughs> looking at each other like that and we're no. not using each other to gain something or to get somewhere like I'm not trying to get anybody else's subscribers she's not trying to get anybody else's subscribers that's not what we're trying to do because we can't because you know people subscribe to you because you're you so exactly we can make this people video like you because you're you and I could get like five of your subscribers because they like me mm -hmm. and that's what we want that's what the sisterhood is but the sisterhood is just a support system it's just a group of girls that we all do the same thing so we all know we work with similar companies we make similar videos and somebody hits a milestone and we all go crazy you deserved it you worked your right. butt off for it it came at the perfect time for you wrapped in this little box only for only you, for you yeah. and you deserve it like yeah live it up and that's how you have to do in your in your in your relationships you can't be looking at everybody else try to live up to other people's expectations none of that works it no. just doesn't work. People make everything about how they look to other people. And it's not about right. that. It shouldn't be about that. Because you can't live your life in the expectations of other people. Um, in a nutshell, if there's any tension or elephants, you gotta address them. And you have to know, we talked about this on the phone, you have to know like their love language. You have to know how right. they respond to stuff. How they think. And how they think. And be open to learning how people think. Yes. Don't, don't close everything into like how just you think. Because everybody thinks differently. Oh. You normally get upset because someone didn't do what you thought they would do. Exactly. And you can't and think that's why that people are going to do that. That's why communication is so important. Because mm -hmm. you, you really should just talk to them about it and figure out where they're coming from. So make more of an effort to understand someone else before like getting upset. Mm -hmm. So the, the key is communication and understanding. And understanding. And get off of social media with your stuff, guys. With your personal business. Yeah, I think our so. our background is telling us to stop it's time this to video to get some Mexican food. So we're gonna go get some Mexican yeah. food. Yeah. So until so, next time, stay beautiful. I love you. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you yes. need anything, it's in the description box, and we will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey guys, today I'm going to do a tutorial on this makeup.